Right, good morning, everybody. It is Dave Webster with ID Crisis Design. It's 8.35 on September 4th. Uh, earlier than I've ever been up, but then again, I went to bed earlier than I've ever gone to bed last night, so... <sighs> Happy coffee. So, what's happening here? All right. I've got these uh, baseball-style helmets from um, a buddy of mine. I put this on a couple of days ago. This is a HD shark symbol, something. I had to path it out in Illustrator, cut it out in the vinyl cutter, and um, one of these days I'll do a demo on, on that procedure too. But today, um, we're putting some lettering on the back of these helmets. I used a um, water-soluble pencil. Um, this is a Lumicore non-permanent, so this um, sketching on here, you can see it says Boss with a king's crown here, and then for the, for the lady, a boss with an E, a boss E, so that's got a queen's crown on it. I was going to go with chess pieces, but... Um, I asked my always objective wife what she thought, and we decided to just hang the crowns off the V. So I like to keep one of these handy, just a little, um, just a little aside. The Speedball Textbook, a comprehensive guide to pen and brush lettering. This is really good stuff. It shows you stroke directions, a bunch of different kinds of uh, fonts. Um, it does, it has a lot to do with, um, you can see your basic strokes on pens and stuff like that. So I like to use, uh, keep this handy. And I just thought that might be a little extra piece of information. I keep that in my kit all the time. Um, I'm going to check real quick to make sure that we're not on autofocus here. If there's anything I can do about that. <clears throat> Sorry about that. <laughs> I had to reboot my computer, my I had to do some stuff with an old, uh, an old register company and, uh, and, and cancel out. So um, I think it I messed with my mail settings. I wasn't getting any mail. So I'm like, all right, well, what's the first thing you do? You reboot. And I did. And when it happens, you got to reset. I got to reset all the sound. I got to reset the autofocus on this camera is it's a great camera but the autofocus is just dastardly here's some chroma flow and some high temp reducer i like to put both of those in this in this cup here we're using one shot today and uh let's see <clears throat> i like to keep my hardener in these tubes uh, one shot um when they when they sell hardener, they sell it in a 16 ounce bottle, and uh, what happens is you get too much headspace, and um, it ends up turning into a basically a giant piece of plastic inside the bottle if you're not using it every day. I think they're marketing this stuff as if people are still out there painting signs like they were in the 20s. So. Um, I, I put these in a solvent proof plastic bottles too, uh, a trick I learned from Brian the Brush. And then I, when I put them in my kit, I turn them upside down so that uh, if, if a skin forms, it forms on the bottom of the bottle. And uh, but, uh, I've never had any problems with it there. So I'm just stirring it up here. I might end up moving this camera closer because I can feel myself reaching out into an uncomfortable area here. Okay, that should help. All right, so mix up the color. Got you going. And the, uh, the brush I'm using is a uh, number eight Quinn Mac. I don't know if you can see that, but that's what it says. You can trust me. So uh, I'm just gonna kind of dive right in here and. Um, do the Lord's work on these 
I'm going to do a, it's just a basically it's a script and then I might pull out some liners to uh, do some of the finer work with it. So this is a, a fairly, I would say, um, kind of a, a slow brush. So when uh, somebody's talking about the, the speed of a brush, they're talking about the snap of the hair. So some hairs can be uh, floppy, like a sword brush that you do pinstriping with is a, is a slow brush. It's floppy. When it gets heavy with paint, it'll it'll sag and 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 bend. Uh, on a lettering brush, it might not do that, but you can tell uh, it's a uh, slow brush is basically a way of saying that it's not stiff. A fast brush is stiff. It's the hairs spring back pretty quick. So, all right. Let's see if you guys can see this. I mean, it's it's odd. It's got to be at the right angle for. For me to work and it's got to be at the right angle for you to see and the thing about this too is there's there's no um it's not like on a flat surface where you have a uh, a place to put a mall stick or or some stabilizing um tool so i'm gonna start and i'm gonna i'm gonna go f sideways to get some sort of a corner sideways and then pull down and then out again and then out to the left okay so and then I can clean this raggedy edge up a little bit here Kind of the same thing here. I'm just um, I'm keeping in mind the angle that the brush is at. So if I want my brush to come up and give me a skinny line up here, then I want to keep it at a 45 degree angle. I don't want to spinning uh, to to spin it around like a sword brush. See, I actually wanted this to climb up a little bit further and not go directly into the side, but um, we'll make do. See, all I'm doing here on the um, on the palette is making sure that that I'm not sideways with my brush. Let's see if you guys can see this a little more. Maybe I should zoom in. I think this allows me to this camera allows me to zoom in. That I'm that I'm flat and not on the side of the brush. These hairs are set up so that you've got a nice wide flat. That I'm not paddling it this way. Okay, so that's. That's what that is. A bit more reducer in the brush. Just kind of tap in some reducer. Get a nice flow going. See, I'm probably just going to have to come across here and start this crown this way. One nice... just like that did you, just, did you see at the end where um, I, I came down here and then I just kind of went sideways a little bit because I didn't want to have this this raggedy hair edge uh, so you kind of scoot the brush sideways a little bit and and help clean up that clean up that edge and we're gonna go the same thing here flat keep the brush in the same uh, in the same general um, position and then nice skinny line down here
kind of not make it look gloopy this um, the paint the more you get it thinned out the less robust it is when it comes to um, being white white and on this video you might not be able to see it but just like I have my head turned to the left here while I'm doing this so I can see the position of it in the monitor it's like the thing you can't really worry about it while you're pulling the stroke because you want the stroke to work out right so hopefully this stays in the shot same thing here skinny fat skinny And you can see how it's kind of dry, it looks kind of dry right there. So I'm going to have to go back over that. Another handy tool to keep, your paint pusher, also available from Mac Brush. You get a little, you know, spot that kind of scooted out on you. You can shove it back, and now with the urethanes, you're going to have to get at it quicker. Urethanes, the urethane paints dry faster. This stuff dries slower was one of the reasons I, I like one shot, and um, you know, the Alpha 6 enamels, the Ronins is, they don't kick nearly as fast. So, I got some raggedy edges here I gotta, I'm trying to clean up, so. Okay. bring this tail all the way down I have plans for this it's kind of like um, like a pseudo baseball style jersey you know where you got that big you got the name of the team and then the big swoop that comes down so I'm gonna make it a uh, I want it to end in a V this is gonna go back up into the other side probably thicken this up too while I'm looking at it. Yeah, it's a lot better. Better, better, better. We like better. So, all right, let's get the O. Let's see if we can go a little faster here. I just man, when script works out right it just it feels so good you know and my immediate thought after that is well you better not you know <laughs> don't get comfortable because you know when it starts to lettering style that feels good is is one that's um now that it's become easy for you and you know you don't want to collect rust on your other chops Yeah, 
I gotta make sure you guys can see this. I've tried a bunch of different cameras too. I got like an action camera that gives everything this wide angle look and then I think I used it a couple of times and the, um, the microphone on it starts to throw out static. I'm going to try something bold here. Okay. That's what obsession looks like. Okay. I'm good there. Let's see if I can if I can get this crown in with one brush, then I'll be happy about that. Let's go this way. I'm going to save the rest of these details for a for a smaller brush cuz uh it's just going to it's too tight for something this fat. Okay, I'll get the other one out here. We got more letters and and less room, so let's see how this shakes out.
So, um, not to do something super silent for the entire, just not talk. Um, so, it's not just the stroke, uh, the position of the, um, of the brush. It's not just the angle of the brush, but the pressure I'm putting down on it. So, when I push down on the brush, the hairs are going to spread out and then give me a wider stroke and as I come around to get that skinny skinny stroke I'm picking up on the brush so I can take advantage of that knife's edge that the that the bristles give you There, that's more like, man, I, it was, it was just looking really rickety to me at one point. I'm like, I got to straighten this line up. So good, 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 good. All right, let's get this O taken care of. Again, I hope you guys can see all this because once I start pulling this brush across the helmet, I'm not super um, cognizant of where it is in the camera. Trying to keep it in this, where these lines are. Okay, it's, let's get crowded. It's supposed to have a a hyphen in here, so let's do something different with these with these S tails.
I might not do that again. <laughs> We can get into the rest of this stuff later. So let's see, let's smooth this out a little bit. Okay, so after these two. Bossy and Boss. Okay, let's see about the rest of this. So I have uh, uh, catalyzed some black over here. Uh, and I can't not remember if I mentioned anything before. Uh, like the catalyst, I know I, I talked about putting it into uh, toothpaste tubes, but uh, but <clears throat> uh, I, I wasn't sure about the. Uh, I think it's like I know there's instructions on the bottle, and I don't have the bottle with me because I I emptied it in, into the toothpaste tubes, but um. I don't think you want to go more than 20% uh, on that. You know, it's just like catalyst, like in any other uh, material too much. It hardens really quick. Um, might actually, and, and you don't want too much of something clear in, in your paint because the it's going to weaken the pigment, but too little and it doesn't uh, catalyze at all. Um, but I am sure there are some instructions there. So... Uh, on the bottle so all I'm doing here is um, I'm just kind of adding the little bit of details to the to the crown here and overly criticizing my work I think some of the colors looking a little weak in some of these places so I grabbed a smaller um, Quinn Mac a um, what is this a four so I'm just going to put the little diadems on the crown here. connectors will do that. Queen's crown. King's crown needs a little bit of work right here. Color's looking a little weak. Um, 
and man, every time I've ever been with the um, the guys that uh, would meet up at the World of Wheels in Pittsburgh, it used to be an auction years ago, and that thing got it got trampled by local politics, and it was a real shame. But um, uh, you never, you know, you, you hook up with these guys that you don't see, but maybe once or twice a year, and there's always the debate on like what's the better paint, who's got a new brush out. Uh, stuff like that, and and I always remember hearing that. Um, you know, one shot was you know kind of like reducing pigment or whatever, and then um, the Dupont and which turned into an Exalta came out with hot hues, and uh, Tamco has a which is a great paint company. Um, they have a their own uh, stripe effects line. Uh, it is a urethane, but it works in such close conjunction with the materials that they already have out. It's one of the things that's nice about it. It's convenient. You know, if you want to use, uh, reduce, or um, like the catalyst with their striping effects, you just use the catalyst that you already have for um, your clear, and you just palette it in. You know, it doesn't even have to be a lot. It's like uh, 16, pa uh, 16 to 1. Catalyst, 16 to 16 paint to one catalyst, which is basically like this, you know, stick your brush in the catalyst, uh, brush it into the, you know, the paint. So uh, I need more practice with that stuff myself. So, okay, King's Crown, my lights are giving me all kinds of glare. So I'm going to have to rinse this, rinse this out. Uh, this is a just a it's dirty thinner um, if you're using exclusively enamels with your uh, with your brushes this could be mineral spirits and it is easier on you on, on the hairs it does not dry them out but um, if you're working with urethanes uh, lacquer thinner is going to be the thing to clean your brushes in and then immediately get them in oil now I had an old timer tell me, and I know I've, I've gone through this in previous videos, that um, 30 weight non-detergent motor oil is what he uses. That's cheaper. There's more abundant. Um, nope, the Neats foot oil. I just realized after I rinsed all the white out that I, I totally dropped the stroke on this. One second. It happens to the best of us. drop the stroke down. I was like, why does it not look quite right? And it was right there. There, now it looks like an S. Okay, rinse the brush out again. My God. <laughs> I can't believe Oh man, how many people watching this video are, are right now are like, he's going to see it, or he's going to miss it, or he's going to see it, I, you know, either that or you guys all figured I was just doing this on purpose. Yeah, just drop that stroke at the end just to be, um, uh, just drop that stroke at the end just to be uh, controversial. Either that or, for crying out loud, rinse the brush out again, jeez. All right. There's probably not enough booze in my coffee is what it is. It's a Saturday, by the way, so uh, it's not like it's a Saturday and it's a, it's a special day that, you know, we, it's a special day, but it's a special day that we don't talk about. So it's a special day that we don't talk about here, but I will say uh, if everybody would like to give my twin brother in Atlanta a nice big happy birthday, that would be that would be nice. My twin brother turns 51 today. So, happy birthday, Jeff. And uh, by the way, uh, check out his channel, the Kitbash Federation. Look up that on YouTube. It's really cool. He, he makes a, a nifty, super, uh, super cool spaceship models. Like, uh, you know, when they, they used to do... Uh, practical effects at ILM in Star Wars had a model of the Millennium Falcon and they had to have a model, an actual physical model of the uh, Enterprise that um, he makes all kinds of cool ships like that. 
cool videos. It takes a lot of time to edit them uh, just right, and then they're entertaining. And so I'll put a link if I remember. Uh, put a link in the description. But uh, it's the Kit Badge Federation. Okay, let's go. We're just gonna throw a drop shadow here. That's all this is. But I guess like I I I can't hold the brush the way I'd like to. Because if I if I do if I hold it like with a nice you know, sign painter's grip, then I can't. Uh, then there's nowhere to put my my finger to stabilize. So let's see. So I kind of have to choke up on it like. Um, like I'm using a pen and it's uh all right um something about black that I've always I've always noticed and this is this is this is with every uh color of any type of paint that you use um I've found whether it's going to be gouache or and I'm assuming oil maybe oil is one that's that's different than this because of um, what it's carried in the pigments, but um, especially when airbrushing or when painting uh, like this, because of the materials that the different colors are made of, they tend to have their own um, attitude. Black is is greasy, um, and I I find that unless you palette it out just right, that it it doesn't. Like there's supposed to be some kind of a grip, uh, the relationship between the surface, the paint that's in the brush, and the brush itself, and they all work together uh, the same way that um, speed, um, paint usage, and distance work all together when you're airbrushing. Um, and uh, each paint has its own has its own um, personality, you know. Uh, uh, especially when you're outside, you know, yellow can get uh, chalky, purple can get gummy, white definitely gets chalky. But in, I've found when working with this stuff here, black is a greasy color, uh, and it it slides around a lot. So you have it is 9:30. So you have to, uh, you know, just you have to keep that in mind. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm keeping that white handy. Hmm, let's see. I want this to be a little skinny flick. Hopefully it'll be right on. Yeah, close enough. I'm supposed to put an RGS in here. So we'll do that real fast.
let's keep it going and sometimes you gotta you know paint even though you're uh, you don't quite have your rhythm yet and by that I mean you know there's there's a point where you do this uh, for long enough during a given uh, period of time that um, you're a lot of a lot of what happens happens automatically so and stop me if you heard this one uh, your brain has to do uh, work and think about each one of these strokes instead of your body just doing it because it become uh, because it becomes automatic um, my uh, I have a, <clears throat> a sister who has a touch of cerebral palsy and it gives her a uh, like a pigeon toe walk I'm sure you've seen people like this before um, uh, in all other aspects of course uh, perfectly um, perfectly normal uh, but we were talking about the one day and and she said you know it's it's literally where and she's a smart person but it's a literally a thing where somebody says that you, you can't walk and chew gum at the same time or walking and talking and uh, it's very enlightening a little um, I don't know, I'm not going to say odd, but it was just one of those things that you don't really think about until somebody explains it to you. Um, that because of that handicap, she actually has to spend brain power that other people wouldn't figuring out, you know, even however subconsciously, figuring out where to put each foot uh, before it goes down if she's talking to somebody at the same time because now your brain's doing two things what am I going to say next you're listening and, and and all that and now you're spending brain power that you normally used on figuring out where your feet are going to go because your body never gets used to its awkwardness and so she actually the percentages that she might trip go up and um, and I've had, had that happen before I've heard stories where you know somebody um, is um and i've experienced it myself you know where you're you're going through some sort of a um an emotional trial or you've just got something on your mind and you'll notice like you know throughout the day that you know you spill more drinks or or you bump into stuff you know what i mean you're just not you're just not right there with it all the time like you like you normally are you just you know, no, you wouldn't be able to explain it. I don't know what's wrong with me. Well, the thing is, is you're spending more brain power thinking about this thing that's bothering you. Um, and so the things that normally just happen, they, um, uh, they would happen automatically are now taking up uh, mental energy. And that goes along with you know, when you are doing uh, artwork, airbrush, brush, uh, you know, pinstriping and, and stuff like that, that if you're not doing it all the time, your brain has to think through each one of these strokes where uh, once you get used to it, you know, kind of like riding a bike, your, your body does more of it and your brain does less of it so now your brain has room to be more creative with stuff so um, you're not spending so much time for example you're not spending so much time and you're not worried about keeping the plane in the air you're used to the fact that uh, you know the wings will work uh, the wind works this way you've got your thrust and stuff like that so um, you become more free with it you might do a, a barrel roll or something like that and uh and and learn some tricks or you know like uh somebody on a um you know in x games on a on a bicycle you know they just come up with these tricks because they're more comfortable with the tool that they're using that now the brain has more time to be creative and come up with you know come up with new things and that's what happens that's what happens here um 
you know, uh, because I don't get down on this on a daily basis the way that I'd like to, each one of these strokes in the, in the beginning, it's like first gear, you know, first gear going uphill in a Volkswagen. It's just very jerky and, um, and you got to kind of power through it and keep, you know, keep your, keep your stuff going until everything's just kind of smooths out. You know, like when, uh, like when a, a color guy says, you know, that quarterback, this, the game has to slow down and all they're, they're really saying is he's just got to get into rhythm and it's like that with anything so it's like the you know I'll just start getting into rhythm here and then uh, eventually what will happen is you know the video will end and I'll have a bunch of other stuff that I need to go do when what I should do is just grab a panel and um, crank out some crank out some strokes See that greasy, greasy black just slid right off the runway. <laughs> That's way out. Of, that's way out of the shot. Sorry, I'm staring right at it. Getting there, getting there. I don't want to forget my, uh, I gotta get my RGS in there. I don't want to forget that, like I forgot so many things so far. Oh, see, this is where I hate when like I paint myself into a corner. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna add some drop shadow. So what do I do? Put a bunch of junk in there that's like right next to each other. managed
last little bit. Some casual print. RGS, just like the man said. Put some black into this crown here. Just a couple. a little bit of indication that the crown would have more than one color if it was in color incidentally um and i was talking about the um tamco products more these helmets are done in uh, tamco's bitch orange ordered specially for the uh, bike that these helmets belong to so we've got boss, we've got bossy, and uh, all I'm going to do is, um, yeah, actually, what I might try. First, I'm going to touch this white up. Come on. There, where was it? Right there. Yeah, that cleans that that cleans that edge up pretty well. All right, I'm calling it. It's not bad for. It's, I'm telling you, normally on the weekend, man, I'm not up until I'm not up until 15, 20 minutes from now, and it's a reluctant getting up as well but uh gosh while well, they talk about healthy sleep who'd have thunk it i got a 91 on my sleep score that never happened before so so you like the video that's great there are ways that the various video social media platforms will let you indicate that you like the video specifically the like button um I, I realize that my uh, content is sporadic. I get it out there as uh, time and opportunity allow. So uh, we'll just call it a surprise. Uh, you want to subscribe for some su surprises? If you do subscribe, you'll get them. Surprises. And uh, don't forget to check out... <clears throat> don't forget to check out um, the Kit Bash Federation. Uh, again, I'll try to remember to put a, a link into the description when I'm done editing the crap out of this. So there it is. The bossy and the boss. Hopefully these helmets never hit the ground with a head in them. So uh, I'll talk to you guys later. Like and subscribe. Dave Webster Identity Crisis Design out.